Greetings hobbyists, this is Arsans of Vool, and in this video we're going to look at an add-on that comes with Blender that allows you to generate rocks and some funky tricks you can do with it. So to use this you need to make sure that you have the extra object meshes enabled, so go to preferences, come to add-ons, type in extra, and then you want the add mesh extra object, and as soon as you've got that done, click save preferences and you're good to go. Then you can just press shift A and go to mesh and you have all of these extra objects, including the really useful single vert option and things like gears and pipe joints. It's really, really useful to have, but the one that we're gonna be looking at is this rock generator. And you can see that's gonna make, well, a rock. And we've got some different things that we can look at. Now, let's go through these. And actually, I'm gonna start from the bottom and then talk through them going up, looking at some different bits. We're not gonna talk about all of them, but we'll look at a few. And the most important one here is you've got this preset and you've got it automatically starting as a default rock. Now, you have got some other options here. So you've got, for example, a river rock, which is gonna be a lot smoother. You've got things like an asteroid, which is kind of cool. It looks like it's had things impacting in it. It's much more angular and sort of has these concave parts to it. You've got ice, which, well, looks like a chunk of ice. It looks actually quite similar to the river rock, but with a few more angles to it. I don't think that they're that different, to be perfectly honest, but either way, they're quite nice to be able to play around with. And then finally, you've got sandstone, which I really love because it will looks like sandstone that's been in sort of a desert condition you've had all this wind hitting it slowly eroding it away i will say when you start fiddling with some of these it actually looks quite like a slate as well which can be quite useful for a number of things finally you have this fake ocean which i think looks a bit crap to be honest but Either way, it's usable. I think there's other ways of making waves that look better than this. Now, you'll notice as I've been going through these, it generates something that looks totally different each time. And that is because at the moment it's using a random seed. So whenever we change anything, for example, I could change the scale on the x-axis to be 2, and it's going to totally generate an entirely new rock. I'm going to go back to 1 for that. So if you click use random seed, what that will do is that will turn off that automatically changing. Now I will say if you change your rock again, let's say to asteroid, it then once again totally generates a random one. So there's no point fiddling around with things and then changing rock type. That's why I say start with rock type first, otherwise you come all the way down here and then you might get something you like the look of and it's gone. So I'm gonna go with the sandstone just cause it's quite useful to demonstrate some of these. Let's turn off the random seed and then we can flick through our user seed until we find something cool quite like that okay so let's start having a look at some of these other settings deformation exaggerates how deformed this is in terms of the rock pattern and as i said this is quite useful for this sandstone one because it turns it into something that looks a little bit more like slate especially if you then scale it on the z-axis something like that so that's quite nice we've also got smoothness so you can make it more or less smooth that has a similar effect to the deformation, but it is different. Um, it basically gives a slightly different smoothing to it while that can still be quite exaggerated. So that's quite useful to be able to play around with. And you've got this smoothing factor there. The smoothing iteration is how many times that's applied. So you can basically play around with both of these. Let's bring that deformation down because it's a bit much. And I would recommend that for things like the sandstone, you have that on at least once. Otherwise, it's not going to give this really smooth sandstone-like texture. But again, if you wanted it something like slate, you might take that down a bit. Then you've got your level of detail. Effectively, this is how subdivided it is. And you'll notice if I come over to the side here and toggle my stack, you'll notice you've got all of these different things going on. And you've got a subsurf, in fact, two subsurf modifiers at the top. So that's what's affecting these, or that's what I believe these are affecting. And then you've got the roughness, which again, you can use to exaggerate either way. I generally have that quite low down. The other things that are worth looking at is you can change your scaling on a different side. So for example, you could say you want it to be longer on the Y. So I could put that to three, and now it's gonna be exaggerated on the Y. So you can change the shape of it. Oh, just hit off that. Let's come back into it. The other thing that's quite useful is if you come back into this, you'll notice that it's generally kept the same settings, though it does seem to automatically put on the random seed again. The final one that's really useful about this is you can set the number of rocks that it creates. So you can really quickly be like, I want 10 rocks. And that's going to be important for a later video that we're going to be doing this week. And that's kind of why I wanted to have this introduction to the rock tool, just so I can have it as a separate video. It seems to make it easier for people to search up and find. I normally fiddle around with that. You often get one that's gone a bit weird, so I'll just delete that. And you've got all these different rocks that you've created. 
And this is really useful if you're going to bring in a lot of rocks and you're going to do something like the asteroid field. Notice that it keeps the number 10. So if you're ever finding that it's going a bit slow, this will be Y. So I could quickly come in here and click asteroid and it will turn them all into asteroids. And you can change all these settings and it will do it to all of them. I'd recommend that you put this on one, fiddle around with the one and then change that number up. Otherwise, it's going to be slow on every single thing that you do here. I'm just going to go back to my default. Turn off the random seed and let's have a fiddle around with this. See how angular we want it. Do note that this looks a little bit rubbish at this point. That's just because it automatically smooths this. Don't worry about that. We'll fix that in a second. And then let's fiddle around with this random seed until we get something that we like the look of. Doesn't really make too much of a difference for what we're going to do in a second. That'll probably do for now. Let's go. I think I actually liked one of these earlier ones. That one's quite nice. And we can play with how rough this is or how smooth it is. Let's stick with that for now. And then I'm going to click off of that. If you do click off of it and you haven't clicked on anything else, do remember you can press F9 and it will bring up all of your information here. But as soon as you click on or do something else, that will be gone. And then I'm just going to shade flat and we can get a good idea of what this is doing. And you can still come over here and start fiddling around with your modifiers here. So, for example, we could make this a little bit smoother if we wanted to. And you can fiddle around with the strength of your different textures to see what they all do. And you'll notice that they have slightly different bits on where they affect. So it's worth sometimes having a fiddle around with this. For example, that's going to look a lot more pitted, whereas that's something a bit more rock like. Now, the final thing that we want to mention on this, which is, again, another really cool feature, is that is that if you go into, let's say, edge mode or whatever mode, this is actually just a shape that's having all of this applied to, which means you can do some really funky things with this. In fact, let's just uh, G and Y that off to the side. If I shift an A and then mesh and then bring in our rock generator and then change this to sandstone, turn off the random seed and then find something that we want. There we go. That's quite cool. If I then go into this and go into, let's say, face mode, there's lots of stuff you can do with this because it's just a load of modifiers. For example, I could do something like extrude that out or actually control an R and then maybe come to the side, control a B, bevel that and then maybe go to face and then G and Z that down. In fact, let's control an R here and then let's just go into edge mode and G and Z that up. So you could do something like that and you'll get this really cool sort of peaks and things like that. And you can run maybe like a waterfall coming through there if you wanted to make this really long. Let's just go into face mode and grab those faces. Sort of extrude that out there. And you could easily have some sort of scene here where you've got this waterfall coming over this or just other things. It's really cool because you can play around with it. So to play around with this, I just thought I'd demonstrate it making a bit of a rock monster type thing. If you ever played Orcs for Age of Sigma, you'd see something similar to this, or there was once something similar to this. But it is just a really easy matter of just playing around with the shapes that you've got there. So all I'm doing is either insetting shapes, extruding them, selecting different faces, adding edge loops, and then just moving things around to get a good general shape for what I want to make. Obviously, being a rock monster, there's nothing that you need to be really biologically accurate about. It's just a matter of creating a relatively humanoid segmented sort of structure. And part of the fun of it is that it shouldn't be symmetrical because it's well a big collection of rocks. And you can see everything looks rounded. So every so often I go into object mode just so I can have a look at what this looks like once you've got the modifiers applied. And really it's as simple as that. I'm not expecting most people to use this tool in this sort of way. It's something much easier to do the landscapes that I was showing you before, but it just gives you an idea of what you can do. So because these are modifiers, you can create these great additional shapes and other things, especially for asteroids and landscapes. This is really useful to be able to modify as it is, or you could create a giant rock monster and then do some hard surface modeling to form a rudimentary lathe. Let's see who's first to get in the film reference for that quote. So a really useful tool, and we've got a tutorial coming up where we're gonna use that to quickly create some rocks. And we're gonna be looking at how we can control how we scatter that around some terrain using geometry nodes and a couple of tricks. So if you're not subscribed, do subscribe to the channel so you can see that when it comes out. Have a great day, guys.